Hi, welcome to Seaside Quilting Tutorials. Today our project is kind of a quick one and for me using up some of my scraps. And the reason why is because we're making um, a thread catcher. Uh, for me, I'm calling them wall pockets because um, so it's it's kind of like a thread catcher wall pocket type thing and I'll explain that a little bit. I don't use a thread catcher at my sewing machine, but I definitely could use one at my long arm. I have a little trash can that sits here at my sewing machine and it ends up with more trash than thread, trust me. Um, however, at my long arm, I have um, quite often I'm clipping little threads and um, so it's nice to have a little thread catcher there. So it's just depending on what you need. But I do need some little pockets that I can hang around at different stations. Uh, for instance, at my cutting table, I really need um, a place that I can put my marking pens, my seam guide, um, and, and just some little things that I need handy at my um, cutting table that can't be on my cutting table when um, I'm pinning a quilt, uh, you know, or, um, you know, cutting out fabric and so forth, you know, from three, four yards and stuff like that. It, they just get in the way. And I do have a little edge um, on one side of my cutting table, but everything that I set there either rolls off or gets pushed off with fabric. So um, I was thinking, man, it would just be so nice to have a little pocket that I could hang there. Um, I love those little uh, command strip hangers um, that come in various different sizes. Um, I even have some hung up in my bathroom and I wanna put some little pockets hanging on my wall in the bathroom as well because um, you know, it'd be nice to stick some little hair ties in there or um, things that I don't want on my counter so it's easier to go in and clean up. With all that I do, anything that makes my cleanup easier um, is just better for me. Now, I think these would be wonderful gifts. And if you were uh, giving it to someone as like a Christmas gift or a birthday gift or just a cheer them up gift, um, it would be nice if uh, if you were thinking of like a hair tie thing for the bathroom. Sorry about the puppy. She's a little bit jealous because my husband's out uh, trimming, weed whacking and whatnot and going to be mowing the lawn and I don't want all that noise uh, down in my room. So I have her down here with me so she's not chewing up things upstairs uh, without me around either. So I hope that you'll excuse a little barking every so often uh, she should calm down in just a few minutes okay so as i was saying these would be really neat um, for gift giving you could uh, put some sewing items in there you know like some marking pens and a seam guide and so forth uh, or you could just give it away as a, as a thread catcher as it is um, for me, like I said, I'm going to be using them. I also want to use them in my kitchen because I have some uh, things, utensils and stuff that I would like to be able to hang up on the wall. But I can't do that because I have um, ceramic tile um, backing and so it's hard to hang things. So it's um, I'm thinking I could put some command clips there. Uh, hangers rather and then I could hang the little pockets and I could stick my little utensils in there and that gets more off my counters anything that makes things easier for me to go wipe them down and clean more quickly means I have more time uh, to show you tutorials and to sew things for myself um, and catch up on things and all that needs to go into a day so Let's go ahead and get started with this. It's a very quick project. Oh, before I move forward, I did want to tell you, um, we've been doing a new thing um, at Seaside Quilting Supplies where we've been making kits. And we're calling them um, Sew with Seaside. And um, they're really nice. They're not all based on quilting, summer sewing projects, of course. 
and um, a little mix back and forth. But these smaller kits to do little projects are nice for um, just to use up some scraps, to um, make something quick that you can give away or keep for yourself. Because, I mean, it's always good to keep something for yourself. It's They're also nice, a lot of them, um, if you're trying to teach somebody um, in your family or a friend how to sew. Uh, they're great if you're a beginner yourself um, to learn and practice your sewing skills. And... Um, most of them aren't super challenging. Um, some might be a little challenging until you've made the first one or two and then uh, you can make more. Like our bucket hats, for instance. Many, the first one that they made, they had a little bit of trouble, but then when they got to the second and the third one, they go more smoothly and we've been seeing customers make bucket hat after bucket hat after bucket hat. And we've had nice little kits that we've been making up to give you many options on what to choose. And as people have been watching our lives, they've been seeing fabric going, oh, that would be a great bucket hat, or oh, that would be a great bucket hat. And um, so I think people are really enjoying our kits with the reversible bag and so forth. And we're gonna have more and more kits coming up. They're just, uh, they're inexpensive. It's a cheap way to um, grab some cute fabrics for a project without needing to buy um, say a half yard or a, or a whole yard of something and then having a lot of leftover fabric. So, you know, there's that. Some people don't have scraps um, sitting there that they can just grab and throw something together. I unfortunately have way too many and last year I had donated something like around four boxes and a couple of garbage bags full of older fabrics that I don't use anymore, fabrics that I had so many years, I just honestly was tired of seeing them. I had used them in previous projects and I'm, I, I was just done with them. And there was just so many scraps. It was just boxes and boxes of scraps. I just couldn't keep up with um, cutting them up and finding a place for them. And I'm just tired of uh, fat quarters personally for me. Um, because they end up in a drawer and then when I go to make something I usually end up cutting fabric and then I forget to go to my drawer and pull out those fat quarters although I did use some up for my long arm practice so let's go ahead and get started I'm going to um, adjust my camera so you'll be able to see what's going on now if you purchase a kit from us and you can find us on um, Facebook at Seaside Quilting Supplies, LLC. We have a quilting group. It's not just for quilting. There's also sores there. It's just the name of it. It's called Seaside Quilting on Facebook. You're more than welcome to join us. There's like uh, three questions or so that you have to answer and then um, agree to abide by our rules. And the majority of our rules are to uh, be kind to each other and not solicit because we don't need um, anyone in there soliciting, um, whether it be uh, items from other companies or your own business or whatever. We just, we don't want to, uh, you know, overwhelm people with all that. You see enough of that on Facebook and all the places that you go on the internet that we just don't need those extra ads in there. Okay, so... You're going to find the measurements down in the down in the description area. If you click down there, you'll see um, I will put all the measurements. This is going to be my outer fabric here. Some cute little kitties. Darn. I need to get that camera just a little lower. Sorry for the wiggling. It's just the unfortunate thing. I don't have anyone filming for me. I'm not one of those uh, big companies that has that. I'm just me at home. Um, I work separately um, from my home um, in Northern Virginia and Seaside Quilting Supplies is actually down in Central Virginia. So I film up here and they make your kits down there. Okay, so I'm just using this cute little kitty fabric. Um, Maybe if I hang this up near my uh, sewing area, maybe it will make my kitty not want to play with my sewing machine. I don't know. 
We'll see what happens with that. But I just thought this was cute. I have this leftover from a project that I did and um, I wanna use some of it up. It's not really uh, something that I can use um, in a quilt um, in, these, in this size. And so it's nice for projects like this. And I made some uh, glasses, uh, glass covers or glasses holder <laughs> it's hard to get it out there the right way and I made um, some other little things for gifts that I gave away last year and so I have this left over and I thought oh this would be um, really cute with the little kitties and so that's gonna be my outer fabric I'm just using this plain um, it's not really a contrasting fabric but it is nice if you use a type of depending on what your outer fabric is to have a contrasting fabric because the contrasting fabric is going to stick out just a little bit above the outside. Um, and then I have um, my, uh, so that's my lining, this is my outer fabric, and then this is the accent piece that I need. And then um, I have another piece that's going Oops. Yes, this is my accent fabric. And then this is for um, my tie uh, that I'm going to use, like the little hanger that I'm going to use. And we'll go over the hanger part afterward because there's a couple of options um, with the hanger part that you can either make two separate ones. Now, if you decide to take your um, this piece and make two separate pieces you could use a snap on each end so this way if you have a handle on the top of your so you can use snaps on each end I'm sorry I've had to pause a couple of times just to calm the puppy down and get her to realize that we're not going to bark at that back door <laughs> um, or you could use a piece of velcro on each end and I'll kind of go over that when we get to it but um, or you can do this all in one piece and just have a loop. So like I said, we'll go over that when we're ready to get to that. The other thing that will be optional is, um, and will not come with a kit. So all your fabric pieces will come with your kit. The one thing that won't come with your kit is boning. And I'm using boning around the top edge of my thread catcher to keep it open or wall pockets which is primarily how I'm going to be using these around the house. So it will kind of keep it open so that, uh, especially if you're using it as a thread catcher, because you don't want to have to fiddle with it to open it up. Every time you want to throw a thread in, you just want it to stay open. However, in thinking about this, because when I went to buy my boning, it was cheaper for me to buy 25 yards than it was um, to buy a smaller um, section of it and uh, so that'll probably last me the rest of my life um, for projects but I have plenty of it but then as I was thinking about it I was like you know you could just use um, they have long um, uh, what do you call it uh, da -da -da -da. Um, I wrote the name down <laughs> the uh, what was I think? Oh, zip ties. Yes. Sorry. Names of things just go in and out of my head. Numbers stick, but names of things do not. So you could use a really long um, zip tie um, in here, or you could even use two zip ties. So you would fish one in one way and fish one in the back way just to keep it popped open. The boning, uh, works great because I can cut the size that I need. Um, and it really isn't all that expensive, but that won't come with your kit because it is optional. So let's get started. I have my, uh, my iron warming up and um, I'm going to have this uh, wool pressing mat here. I love the wool pressing mat because you get the heat coming from the bottom and the top both. And that just presses things a lot nicer. Um, mine's getting a little stained up from having my iron on here. Those little irons uh, get hot even when they're on those little silicone mats, let me tell you. 
uh, that little silicone mat just heats right up. So you're going to take your, um, your accent fabric that's right here, and you're gonna fold that in half, and we're going to press it. Now, before you cut your fabric, you really should always press your fabric. I know some people say, oh, I don't bother with that. I just cut it out and make my thing. But in the end, if you're pressing things as you go, um, they just look more finished. They, they look uh, nicer. Um, I don't wanna um, sound bad about it, but it, it just, it, it makes it almost look like you purchased it somewhere kind of a look. It just gives it that really nice um, finished look. Now you could finger press this. You don't have to have an iron, um, but it's really up to you. I just like to press my things. And the black is hard to see, let me tell you. So I did not get that pressed right in half like I wanted. So we'll just fix that now before I get going. There we go. So you're just gonna press that all the way across in half. And then you're going to take that and you're going to lay it across the top. Now, I have a directional fabric because of these kitties. I don't want them to end up upside down, although that would be kind of funny if they were hanging upside down. Um, so if you have a directional fabric, make sure that this is going at the top of your fabric. And I'm just gonna move this camera back just a little bit. I wanna make sure you're being able to see everything. And I'm just going to clip it. You don't have to. Um, this isn't as exacting as when you are um, quilting something and you want it to come out an exact size. This is just one of those really easy, relaxed projects. You don't have to overstress it. Um, and for me, I'm just using uh, fabrics that I've had for a while. because uh, I don't want to cut up my, my new fabric. This is, you know, really nice fabric. I did get this from um, the kitties from Seaside Quilting Supplies quite a long time ago. And um, I, like I said, I've used it for some projects and now I have this extra and thought, well, let's use it up instead of having to cut it up. So I'll have some of these around my um, sewing room, uh, room. I have probably enough to make four of these pockets or thread catchers, whichever you want to call them. And then you're going to sew a quarter of an inch. So you have all your raw edges at the top. Your fold is going down and you're going to sew a quarter of an inch all the way across the top. I'm just using uh, 2.5 stitch length and um, a quarter of an inch setting on my sewing machine. I am using uh, my quarter inch guide foot that has that little flange, metal flange piece on the um, side over here to guide my fabric so it makes it really quick. You can easily use your regular um, foot and then just use your guide on your um, plate. So then, once that's done, we're going to take our lining fabric 
and we're going to lay this on top of it. Now, the lining fabric is longer, and it's supposed to be that way because when we're done sewing, the lining will fit inside perfectly, but then it will pop up a little bit above um, the other piece. Just it, it just gives it a cute little look, and you'll see when we get to that point. So I'm just going to clip that, and once again, we're going to have right sides together. And that's, you know, important, especially if you have a print. And if you're not using batiks, you need to make sure that your right sides are together. And all of our raw edges at the top. And I'm just going to put a couple clips in here. A lot of times for these projects, I don't bother um, to clip them because I just sew across really, really fast. They're just quick projects for me. But um, for the sake of everything, I'm just gonna do them today. So once again, you're going to just sew right back over where you sewed um, previously a quarter of an inch. Um, it does don't have to be right on your line. Don't stress over that. We're just going to do a quarter of an inch sewing again. Okay, so that's done. And so now it's going to look like this. And we're going to give this a quick press. You could, you know, easily do finger pressing if that's your thing, that's totally fine. Um, but I like that nice finished look, so I'm going to do a press. But before I do that, I'm making sure that this accent piece is going to come down toward your outer fabric. You don't want to go in towards your lining. And then I'm going to give it a quick press. With my little handy dandy iron. These are so easy to make that you'll wonder why you didn't already make some of these seriously. So then you're going to fold your fabric in half. Matching up both your ends to make sure that you're getting that halfway point. And I'm going to take a pin and I'm going to mark, I, I want to make sure that the seam where my accent fabric is matches up. So I'm gonna match those up really well and I'm gonna stick a pin in there to make sure that they stay together. I like to use pins when I'm matching up seams. Otherwise, I usually use the clips, but it's fine, whichever your choice is. Get that matched up there. And I'm going to, let me see, I'm going to take my ends, make sure that they're lined up, just kind of shake it a little bit. And what I'm doing, I'm just going to finger press just gently. And I'm going to take a couple of pins so that I can mark where my center is. Now you could use a fabric marker, but since I'm pressing with the iron, I don't want to end up hitting it when the iron at some point and uh, erasing my, my little uh, mark. So I'm just gonna stick that pin, in, that pin in there for now so I mark the center, so I won't forget where the center is. Okay. 
okay it doesn't need to be in there exactly perfect i just need to know where that little center where i folded was so now you're going to sew a quarter of an inch seam straight from this edge over here all the way over now i am going to put just a couple of clips on here so i can keep my fabric lined up so a quarter of an inch all the way from one end to the other Actually, I need to correct that. Um, when I get here, I want to leave about an inch opening. This is optional. Let me get this just a little bit closer. So I'm going to, I started at the lining side. It probably is a lot easier if you start at the um, outer fabric side and come down and sew up to uh, where that raw edge ends. But since I started from the lining side bottom, I'm going to stop about an inch away from where you can see the raw edge of your um, outer fabric. I want about a one inch opening right there. And that's for that optional part that we're going to have for the boning. Now, if you're not going to be using the boning and you don't, or a zip tie, um, don't worry about that. Um, you can just sew straight down and not leave an opening. But I'm going to leave about a one inch opening right here. So I'm going to sew right down till I get to about a one inch away. Let me grab my seam guide. These are very handy to have at your sewing machine. And I want about an inch away, so I got just a little bit further to sew. And I'm going to secure my stitches right there. Now you can either use reverse and forward for that. I have a fixed button on my machine that takes care of it, and I'm going to cut my thread. So I've sewn from the lining side up and I've left an inch gap from here where I ended to here. Now I'm gonna start sewing right here at this raw edge and go all the way up to the end. And fix your stitches right there, secure your stitches there as well, so then when you're um, getting the boning to go through, um, or the zip tie, whichever, um, you won't be widening your stitches and separating them. I'm going to fix this. If this happens to you, which it could, um, this slipped on me and so it didn't catch. It's a little off. So I'm going to take the stitching out up to here and I'm going to restitch it. 
And I don't mind um, having these things happen when you're watching me because in case it happens to you, I don't want you to stress. I don't want you to um, struggle over it. It happens to even people that have been sewing. And I've been sewing since I was, um, well, I started with home economics in school. And then um, my wonderful, blessed stepmother uh, started teaching me to sew when I was 16. And she didn't start me with any EG project, I'll tell you what. She had me start with a suit coat. And a vest and the vest had um, a, a V on each side of it uh, I thought she was going to make it for me as teenagers are and found out in a very slow sneaky way that I was making it and then after that she convinced me that the best way to learn sewing was to make Barbie doll clothes <laughs> were my sisters that was also very sneaky of her she told me if you can sew Barbie doll clothes you can sew anything so we won't talk about that adventure <laughs> I did make Barbie doll clothes and I find tiny tiny things very very frustrating so that was an interesting adventure in my life okay you want to make sure that those raw edges are lining up to each other nicely. Mine slipped when I took that pin out. Make sure that your um, accent fabric is lined up once again. And I'm going to reclip this. Technically, what I should have done, where my mistake came in, is I should have started sewing from here and stopped right there where the accent fabric came together and then left my one inch opening and then continued to sew down the end and that's where I goofed it up because I started at the wrong end so we'll, now we'll do it the right way But if I don't make mistakes and show you how to get through them, then it can be very, very frustrating, especially if you're a new sewer and you go, wow, she just did that and uh, this is what I did and how do I fix it? So there you go. Now it will be a little thicker where your um, accent fabric is. Just slow down with your sewing machine. And it won't be a problem. Once again, secure your stitches either with a, um, and I'll show you with a reverse. I go back like three, four stitches back and then go forward and cut my thread. There we go. That might not be perfectly matched up because of the slipping for me, um, but I'm not worried about it. If I hadn't goofed that up, it would have been perfect. It will be perfect enough for what I'm using it for. This one is not going to be a gift. It's just going in my sewing room. And they won't see the backside anyways, the way I'm hanging them. So, that's that. So, now, and like I said, I got a little opening. And this is optional. You could have just sewed straight down all the way. But this is for me to put my bon to slip my boning in after. So now I have those pins there to show me where my center is. And I'm matching up my seam 
and I'm just going to open this up a little bit and finger press it for now. And I'm just match, matching up that seam with that center back there. And I'm gonna stick a pin there to hold it in place. And I'll put a little clip on each side of it to keep it right where I want it. And then I'm gonna do the same thing at the other end. I'm just going to finger press open my seam and I'm gonna match my seam up to that center. Typically when I'm sewing by myself, I have music playing or a little movie and I'm very relaxed with my cup of coffee and uh, yeah, but when I'm doing stuff, filming it, things happen. So, okay, now I have the center. What I want to do is first I'm going to finger press my seam open. Which got a little funky right there where that accent fabric is. This will not be, mine won't be as perfect as yours. Yours is going to be much more perfect than mine right now. Of course, the last one I made, I made when I wasn't filming as to get one done because I needed it over at one of my stations and it's kind of grungy it's older and I didn't want to show it because it's gotten older and grungy and I don't like to show those things so and once I get the seam pressed open a little bit Then I'm going to press it with my iron. Now you don't have to press it with your iron, but I just want it to stay laying flat for me. And I can see that I mucked up that little area a little bit, but it's just going to hang some of my stuff up for me. So if it was a gift, I would take it even more apart and fix it. Perfect. But it's not so I'm not worried about it. So, you're going to sew straight across up here, a quarter of an inch seam. And you're gonna sew this all the way across. Now down here, <clears throat> excuse me, I want to leave about a two inch gap and opening down here. Now you can take and you can mark it with a ruler if you want. I'm just going to kind of guesstimate in my mind, but I want to leave um, a two inch opening right here. So I'm going to sew from this edge over and then I'm going to secure my stitches, cut my thread, and then I'm going to start sewing from here and I will secure my stitches here because we need to have an opening to turn this at the end. And then I'm going to sew from here over to, over to the end. And I'm securing my stitches towards the center because when I go to turn it, I don't want my stitches to spread open and cause me a problem. So I'm leaving approximately a two inch opening because I know that's going to be comfortable for me and it's going to leave me some room because we're going to be boxing the corners. Take that 
pan out. And so as you can see, I have that little opening down here. So when I go to turn this outward, I'll have a space that I can do it. I secured my stitches on both sides. Now I have a fix, like I said, on my machine. Whoops. I'm gonna clip this thread out of my way. And, but you could go, you know, reverse three, four stitches back and then come back and cut your thread. Okay. So now we need to box our corners. And you just need a ruler so that you can measure and something to mark with. And I'm just using um, a Frixion pen, but you can use a water soluble pen. <coughs> this isn't gonna show up. It's Well, it's gonna go away afterward, but it's not gonna show up because um, it's on the inside. So I need to go one and three quarters across and two inches down. So this side will be two inches and over here, I gotta get to um, the one and three quarters. Actually, I'm gonna turn my ruler this way because it will be easier. Okay, so my husband's off to the store. I shouldn't have any more interruptions. I think the puppy's calmed down now and uh, all is good. So we're going one and three quarters across the top and two inches from the bottom up. And I'm just going to mark this on all four corners. So on the two corners of the lining and on the two corners of your top fabric. Now you don't have to worry about being exacting, but you know, as close as possible to that. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So one and three quarters up here and two inches on this side. This is one of those nice, simple projects that you really can't muck it up much. Although, if it's me and I'm on film, you never know what's going to happen. So I'm just going to take my fabric scissors. And I'm going to trim these corners out. little harder to see my marking on the outer fabric because it's darker but I could see it good enough There we go. So it's gonna look just like that on each end. So now you're gonna take this and you're just going to open it up like this. I'm just going to finger press these uh, seams open.
and you have the opening of course right there and I'm just wanting to get this so I get that open and my raw edges together and I am going to put just a little pin there to keep that together for me nice and neat and now you want to make sure when you fold this that it doesn't get folded like this because that will muck it up and you also want to make sure so I want it to be folded just so that this meets up and this meets up over here, okay? And I'm gonna do a quarter of an inch straight across and I'm gonna do this on every single one of the corners to make my little box corner. And of course, when I get it over to my machine, it wants to open up on me, but we'll get it. So we'll just continue to do that all the way around all four corners. I don't have all the little magic that some do when they're doing tutorials where, you know, they whip it back out at you and it's all, you know, done. I'm sewing with you. Sometimes I'm able to create a little bit of that magic, but some of these projects, it's just easier for me to sew it with you. Remember to open up your seam. Stick a little pin in there. And then sew that straight across. That quarter of an inch. Actually haven't made one of these for quite a long time. I think the last time I made one was when I was working for um, Viking Sewing Gallery, and that was a few years ago. About oh three, three and a half years ago, I worked for Viking for a while. That was a fun adventure. We did I did some teaching and. Of course, selling machines and then teaching people how to use their machines and teaching them the embroidery software um, for the embroidery machines and stuff like that. That was a lot of fun. Um, it was an adventure in my life that I was not expecting. In fact, I wasn't even looking for a job at the time, but they had an opening and um, I had been going to <clears throat> some of the embroidery uh, classes just for fun, just to hang out with other people. And um, I spent most of my class time going around and helping other people, <laughs> you know, because why not? And um, so then... They kept asking me if I would like a job. And eventually I said, okay. And not only was it a lot of fun um, meeting new people and um, whatnot, but I learned a lot because we had some really unique customers 
um, that came in who knew things that I didn't know and actually taught me some things. So it was wonderful. It was a great adventure. Okay, so now we've done all of our box corners, okay? So it looks like this on each end. We are going to push this fabric through that opening and that's why we secured the stitches on each side of the opening so that as we're pulling this through we don't tear our stitches open and you're just going to slowly guide your fabric through there's no hurry and I just kind of push it through from the bottom and let it work its way through that opening it doesn't take very long and then once I get enough of it through I can come here in the center down here and help pull it through and eventually it comes out of there okay Now you can take one of those, um, take a stick or whatever, and I just have this dowel that goes um, with one of my uh, turning things for turning uh, fabric when I'm making uh, straps and stuff like that. And I'm just gonna stick that in here and I'm just going to push out my little corners so this all fits together neatly. So now your bottom is going to look like this. And I'm just going to stick this dowel up through here and poke out the corners on the outer fabric. So it will look nice and neat. Okay. So now where that opening is, I'm just going to pull that up and I'm going to poke this in that quarter of an inch that we did our seam and you can either press or you can finger press this and I'm just going to put it in my sewing machine and I'm just going to about an eighth of an inch sew across this opening no one's going to see it it's going to be on the inside so but I mean, if you if you wanted, you could hand stitch this. I'm not one of those people that prefers to do it that way. I'm gonna stick a little clip on there to keep that other side there. And like I said, about an eighth of an inch. I'm gonna sew across that opening just to keep it closed so your threads aren't ending up on the inside. I'm just wanting to close up that opening. And my bobbin thread is not wanting to work with me. So it's just sewn closed across my sewing machine. No biggie. Clip those threads. Okay, so now I'm going to stuff the lining down in. Give it a little bit of a shake. And as you can see, some of my lining fabric is going to come up. It's about, let me see, I think it's gonna be about a half an inch, give or take.
actually might be closer to an inch once I get this down here. We'll take a look and we'll measure in just a moment. I'm just getting it stuffed down in there properly. And this is where I left that little hole for my boning to go through. I'm just getting it evened up so it's the same all the way around. And it doesn't have to be perfect. So it's going to, for me, it's going to be, uh, let me see. About a half an inch, if I ever get this stuff down in here nicely. <laughs> One side just does not want to cooperate with me going in. Here we go. Now my back is a little muffed up because that's where I had that slipping thing happen. But I'm not worried about it because that's after I put my boning in, that's where my uh, little strap is going to go. So you're going to get it just about... I don't know. Mine is about three quarters of an inch. And I have that, like I said, I have that opening there that I'm going to fish my boning in. And if you didn't want that option, then that's closed and you won't see that. So now I'm going to take this and I'm going to stitch right along this seam between the accent fabric and your inner lining fabric. Now you could do a decorative stitch if you want. I'm just going to straight stitch it. And just be careful. Now my machine sits down into the table. So just be careful if yours does the same, that you're not catching your underneath fabric into the top while you're sewing. I don't grab that underneath fabric and have it end up where I don't want it. Whoops. I'm a little more particular when I'm off for myself. I know it doesn't make sense, but I'm just trying to show you the tutorial. Ah, and this thing is just giving me a hard time today. Like, it does not want to be nice to me today. And there are days like that, I'll tell you what sometimes more than we want. Okay. Okay, so I've got that sewn. And I'm actually going to go back over this so it looks neater. And I'm going to put a little piece of um, rickrack around here. So it'll be a little more decorative and you won't notice that I slipped right in there and another place. Um, but for me, this is just for my sewing room and I didn't need it to be 100% accurate. 
but I'm going to put, I have some uh, coordinating uh, rickrack that I'm just going to put across this top edge and sew that on and it will look nice and cute. Okay, so now this is when you would cut your boning. If you're going to be using your boning, if not, that's fine. It has a pretty big opening, so if you're not using boning, um, it still stays open pretty good. I just thought it would be nice to have it in there. And I got all kinds of cuts in my boning. Okay, let me get a nice long piece here. Now you'd want it about approximately 18 inches, but I'm just going to go around and I'm going to guesstimate. And I have my um, junk scissors somewhere here close by. There we go. And I'm going to feed this. So you want whichever way your boning or your strip tie is curved. That's the way you want to feed it in so it goes that way. You don't want to try to go the opposite way because it will, it will just keep trying to pop the wrong way. And it's not super hard. That's why I left enough of an opening. It's not super hard to feed it through. It goes through really easily. Um, if we had done a smaller um, opening or width, then it wouldn't have fed through as easily. And then it just comes right out the other side. And if you need to, you can clip just a little bit off each side not a lot you do want it to kind of crisscross each other I'm gonna snip just a little bit on each side and then I'm going to stick that into that opening on both sides I'm telling you, if there's a problem that can happen, it's going to happen to me while I'm filming. There we go. Okay, so nicely in there. I'm going to clip my threads that are on the inside here. When my machine cuts the threads, it always puts it on the bottom side, on the bobbin side. Okay, so see how now with the boning, it stays nicely open. It's popped right open. And when it's hanging, that's going to stay nice and open for me. And I don't have, I can just pop my threads in or whatever I'm going to be using it for. Now, some of these I do use for um, the wall pocket um, hangers. And some of them, like this. I like the, this size um, for my thread catchers. I like it this size for like if I'm using it to put my scrunchies in to hang in my bathroom. Um, but if I'm using it just for pens and stuff, I would do it probably half the width of this one and make it exactly the same way, but my fabric would be a, the same height, but not as wide when I go to make it. And my little box corners would be smaller. Um, and you can play around with that. Uh, as you get making these, um, you'll be able to vary them yourself. It's the same basic idea. Um, it's just I like some smaller ones for just hanging, putting my pens in and uh, seam guiding and stuff. And I might make them um, sometimes a little bit shorter it just depends on what I'm going to be using it for. But this is your basic size 
for your thread catcher or um, if I was to put some utensils in here and hang this up in my kitchen, I have some really cute kitchen fabric so I could use my um, loop and hang this up um, in my kitchen and I could have utensils stuck in here out of the way, off the counter. There's so many uses for these, but um, I just think this is a wonderful little project. A lot of fun to make, very easy. Okay, so now we're at the part where we're gonna do our loop. We're just gonna set that aside. Okay, so we're giving you enough of your loop fabric. So if you want to um, have a nice long loop, so this would end up being like this. It's gonna be folded differently, but I'm just showing you the idea. This is how big, it's gonna be narrower. But um, this is how much space there is for hanging. Now, if you want it shorter, you can cut your fabric in half so that your hole for hanging is smaller. You can also cut this in half. It's good, like I said, it's gonna be thinner. It's gonna be thinner like this when we get done, okay? So that, if you fold it in half, this is how much of a loop you're gonna have for hanging it. So this really is dependent on where you're gonna be using it and how long you want this to be. I also have one of those uh, coat racks that just has like pegs coming out of a board. And um, I'm gonna hang that one in one of the utility rooms with some pockets going across on each peg for um, my painting brushes and things like that in my art area. The other thing that you can do is you can cut this in half so that you have two pieces and you'll finish them the same exact way that we're going to do this. It's just so that if you wanted to put Velcro on the top of each edge, so say we had two of these, and I'll grab another piece, just so I can show you the idea. So you could cut this in half so that you have two separate pieces of a tie, of, of a hanger. And these two pieces would get sewn to your pocket. And then on each end of this, you could put a piece of Velcro on each side so that you can Velcro it, it together. That way, if you have a handle on the top of your sewing machine that you want to hang it from so it's right next to you here, um, you would be able to do that, or you could put a snap on that side and this side so it snaps together. I have one of those little snaps kits. Instead of using Velcro, quite often I use snaps because I have a whole kit of them and I have a ton of them. Um, and so the snaps are easy. So this end would get, these ends would get finished and rolled over like this so that there'll be a finished end and you would put your snap in and your snap in. This will actually be tucked in and I'll show you that in a second. And these two ends um, would be tucked in as well and they would get sewn to this back part. So you would have a loop like this to be able to hang it up. I hope this is making sense. <laughs> I'm trying to make it make sense. So you're gonna take your, your strip of fabric that is for your loop and you're gonna fold it in half. I folded this one so many times I got all kinds of little folds in it. I'm going to press this so that it's in half You'll want to do the same thing. And then I'm going to take it and I'm going to fold each side into that, up to that fold. And I'm going to press that. I'll do one side first and press it, it just makes it stay 
there for me so it doesn't unroll on me. And then I'll do the same with the other side. I'm going to fold that into that center. And give that a press. I swear it would be nice if I had an extra arm, but I would look kind of awkward with it, wouldn't I? So before we do, let me see. So you want to take your, now that we have that marked and pressed, you're going to take your end and you're going to fold it in about a quarter of an inch. And we're going to sew straight across that. And that's going to give us a finished end. And we'll be sewing it at about an eighth of an inch. And that's just going to give us that finished edge instead of having, you know, raw edges at the end, okay? And now that I have my folds there, on that end, I can see how long, how big of a loop do I personally want for mine. And I think... For me, this is a good sized opening for me and I'm just gonna be hanging it on a little hook. I have those command sticks and I got little tiny ones, little tiny squares that I can, um, on my long arm table, I can stick it and then I can hang this on that little loop. So it will be hanging right next to me here um, so I can throw my threads into it. It just depends on how you're using it. And this end down here is going to be finished like this top end. So if you were making uh, two separate ones so you could put a snap or a piece of Velcro up here, all your ends need to be finished off like we did here. So I'm going to cut this right about where I'm going to want my loop to be. And I could surely have, you know, a longer loop like, like that and use my whole piece. It's really up to you. Um, I could cut it in half, finish each end, and put my um, Velcro or my snaps up in here because it would be open like this. And I could just put my um, snaps. So you wouldn't even have to cut this end because this is going to get sewn to the back. And then you, this end will be finished like this side. And you could put your piece of Velcro here and your piece of Velcro here so that they can stick and then you can take it apart to remove it. So that's like if you wanted to hang it on a handle or something that you're going to loop this around. I'm not going to, I just need a loop hanger there. So I'm gonna cut this right about where I feel I'm gonna need it. And I'm, we're giving you a long enough piece so that you can make those decisions. <coughs> and I'm going to do the same thing down here. I'm going to roll this over about a quarter of an inch, and then I'm going to stitch it across at about an eighth of an inch from the edge. both ends finished and I'm going to trim those threads and then fold these back into the center and then make that other fold so I have folded edges on this side and I have finished edges on each of the bottom sides I'm going to put a little clip 
on each bottom so they stay together the way that I want them. So once again, if you're going to do it with Velcro on each end or a snap for each end, you would just fold it in half at this point. And this side would get sewn to the back here. And I'm just going to meet it up to where my accent fabric went. Like that. And then I would have this open so I can do my Velcro or um, my snap. But before we do that, we need to finish this piece off, okay? Now I'm going to be doing it reversed because I want just a loop. I don't want to do a snap. I'm just going to hang it. So I'm gonna kind of do it in reverse. So it just depends on which way you want to utilize this. Before I do that, I'm going to finish this so it stays together. So now that I have, well, I should have left my little clip in this end, mind you. So I'm gonna sew straight across right where this is so I can close that up and keep it together. And then I'm going to sew straight down this side and approximately an eighth of an inch from the edge so that you're, you're well, this side it wouldn't matter. Up here it does. So I'm gonna sew it across. I'm gonna pivot. I'm gonna come straight down this side. Then I'm gonna go across where I sewed down here to lock that up. And just to give it a nice finished look, I'm going to sew up this side and finish where I started. And of course it decided to jam up on me. Without fail, if it can happen when I'm on camera, it does. So I just trim those off. It's a little bit thick right there, so. It did not want to go where I wanted it to go. And like I said, you're going to stop and pivot. If you sewed too many stitches across, just go back one or two stitches so it's lined up. Oh, I'm telling you what, one of those days. Sorry about my hands getting in the way, but because this is a small piece, I have to hold it with both my hands. And then just stop where you started. threads again. Get those out of the way. So it's going to look like this sewing it. And I veered off a little bit here because that's where it jammed a little bit because it was thicker. It's not a big deal. It's just a loop. And I can throw my little threads and my thread catcher just like that and get them out of the way. Perfect. So now for those that are doing just a loop, it's going to look just like that, okay? Now, this is going to be thick when we sew it through. So, you're just going to have to slow down and sew slowly, okay? If you're doing it in the reverse way, where you want a snap on each side or a piece of Velcro on each side, we will sew this end to the back and then this will be open so that you can do that and then your loop will look like this when you Velcro it together or when you snap it together, okay?
I'm hoping that that's, if that's as clear as I can possibly make it for you. It's optional which way you choose to do it. And I got my little threads in there. And to make this a little bit easier on me, I'm going to sew it across for, on the inside right here first because then it won't be as thick, okay? This is for those that want the loop and aren't doing the Velcro. The other way, you would just take your piece and I would put it on the outside personally or you can stick it on the inside. But where I have that opening, I'm gonna take little pin here. I want to push that so that the the raw edge is going to the inside. If it would just cooperate with me just a little bit. I'm just going to poke that in and it pulls right back out when I'm pulling this out. So let me see. get it in there and give it a little bit of a finger press after I get both sides in. I'm going to poke this side in here. I'm going to give it a little finger press. So that raw edge stays inside. That's the goal. It doesn't want to do it. So I'm just going to Poke that in until I can get it just the way I want it. So I want all my raw edge to go in. This is going to get closed up a little bit as you're sewing. So if I was to do it where I um, want both ends to be open so I can use that, I'm going to sew it to the back. And you're going to sew really slow across it so that it attaches, okay? Now, where I want it to be just a loop, which I think the majority of people will, I'm going to set this first part inside because I want to cover up that little uh, opening for my boning. So I'm going to sew it across right where that bottom seam is on here. And I'm going to change out my foot to my regular foot in just a moment as soon as I locate it. There we go. Because that little flange coming out on my quarter inch foot will be right in my way. And like I said, you're going to want to go slow. I'm going to make sure that the fabric for the strap um, goes in a little bit. So I'm not right at the edge. I'm in about where this stitching is that went around both sides, so it's not going to jam, hopefully. And I'm just going to go really slow when I sew. And you do want to secure your stitches. Just go slow because it is thick. And I'm going to reverse and I'm going to go back over those stitches again to secure it really well and cut my thread. And I'm going to trim these threads and I can just poke them into my thread catcher here since it's right here. Now if that opening bugs you, you can certainly hand stitch the, that little gap together. But I'm not worried about it personally. So now I'm going to lay this side and I can feel underneath that it's matching up. 
and now it's going to be a little even more thicker and you can bring it down just a little bit so it goes past so the inside piece is here you can fold it down so that your strap piece actually the this end of it here is actually below it Not by a lot, I don't need it as much as what I had it, but so it will go down onto my accent, my accent piece a little bit and I'm gonna stitch it there. That will make it a little less thick for me and a little bit easier to sew. And once again, start your stitching. I'm gonna line this up once I get it under my needle so I know it's straighter and you're going to start your sewing like I said right with this stitching on the edge so that I'm a little bit past it with my needle and I'm just going to stitch really slow because it is thicker whoops I'm still in my burr so that isn't going to help me And then I'm going to reverse my stitches and go back over those just to give, make it extra secure so it's going to hold up well and cut my thread. And I trim that and stick it in there and trim these two. Now it shows that it's below on the inside, but I don't care. Um, it's on the inside. When you hang it up, you don't even notice it. You don't even really see it. But so that you can see, and I didn't trim those as well as I would like. So as you can see, this is on the outside. You could even have brought this down a little bit more <clears throat> to cover up this seam completely. But then you have your little loop to hang it. Now, if you did choose to do... Um, to have it so that this was open up here and you have your snap then you could just loop this around something and then snap it or velcro it and take it apart that way to move it around and I may put just a couple stitches uh, hand stitches right there um, or you could you could sew across right here which is what I'm gonna do actually I think now that I'm thinking about it I'm gonna sew right across here and that will keep that opening together and now I'll actually box in that opening And I'm using um, a thread so you could see, because I knew going on black, typically I would use a black thread, but I wanted you to be able to see what I'm doing and I wouldn't be able to show you if I was using black thread. So I went back over that. So I did like a little box here, which enclosed that hole where the boning's going through. And you just can kind of move your boning up with your fingers so it's right at the top edge now that it's all together so then I have my little loop whoops and I can just hang it up where I want it um, this one's gonna go over at my um, cutting table so I can put some uh, tools in here that I like to have handy I'm going to hang some up over on my wall over here and I'm going to put one over at my um, long arm table. Actually, maybe this one will go at my long arm table. Isn't that cute? I like it. So over here, and excuse me while I move my camera around because I want to show you. I got this hanger. We don't have them anymore, but I got this hanger. Whoops. Let me 
see if I can get this into the camera. I gotta move a couple things out of my way so I can see. So I have this little hanger. It's actually like a sewing machine hanger and it had like these little things here. So I wanna make some smaller pouches like this and I'll be moving some of my junk out of the way, mind you, but I just wanted to show you how like, because with my loop, I can just hang it up on the wall and that's why I was also calling these wall pockets because then I can make these little pockets and I want to hang some little pockets going across that I can put some things in here um, that I can keep handy nearby. Now I'm going to leave my scissors hanging on some of them, but on the end ones, like I'll probably move my scissors over like that and then have this one hanging over here. So then I have a little pocket here that I can put some things in out of the way, like maybe my clips or some things that I can just stick out of my way and I can take this off and take it where I want it when I need it. Okay, so please excuse the spinny of the camera. I got things all moved around here. Okay, so that's it for today. I hope the tutorial has been helpful. Um, I do the best that I can um, to try to make them as understandable as I possibly can. Um, with this, it's not an exacting thing. So, um, you know, you had some optional things in there. Um, so I hope that I made them as clear as possible for you. Um, these are gonna be wonderful kits. Mary and Barb are going to be putting uh, thread catcher kits together. I don't know what the pricing will be at the moment. Um, that stuff is up to them. I do the tutorials um, and there will be sheets that will go out to you with a picture and um, it will have the, you know, the sizes um, that you would need um, without the kit. And if you look down in the description um, part of our YouTube uh, video for this, I will have those down there for you as well. So you'd be able to make them. Um, it's wonder a wonderful way uh, to use up scraps or to buy our little kits because um, you'll have everything that you need in the kit to be able to make these. Um, there's no interfacing in them or anything. Um, it's just the fabric pieces that you need. The only thing that you would need separate from the kit that we are sending out to you is if you would like the boning to be put in there. That's the only extra thing. Everything else is in the kit. And you don't have to have the boning. They still stay open pretty well when they're hanging to be able to pluck your threads or your little scraps. I mean, um, a thread catcher isn't just for your little thread pieces, um, but sometimes we have little scraps that we're cutting off of um, things and you can just pluck those in there. And then I have a bin that I keep all my little tiny scraps and batting and thread in that I use for stuffing. Um, why throw it away if you have a use for it? Um, I actually made an ottoman for myself uh, this year I needed one I went out and I priced them and and they were anywhere from $80 up for one that was nice and firm that was made out of um, upholstery fabric and I didn't like the prints that were on them to be honest I just really didn't like them um, the ones that I was finding and the ones that I did find that I liked they were over a hundred dollars and I'm just not gonna spend that for um, a footstool I'm just not. I'm, I could be buying fabric. Are you crazy? So I save my scraps, my batting, my uh, thread. I throw it all into, um, actually I have like a laundry hamper that stays underneath my cutting table and they all go in there. And when I have enough, um, I use them to, uh, when I make stuffed animals, um, when I make uh, throw pillows of my own, rather than buying them. Or sometimes you have a throw pillow that you, um, it just kind of flattens out after a while. 
and is irritating, it's not as comfortable, I'll stick some of that um, extra batting and stuff that I've saved in there and fluff it out so it's thicker um, and, and more comfortable and looks better um, sitting on the couch or the bed or wherever you're using your throw pillows. Anyway, I know, I'm just that way. I'm really, you know, I'm not going to apologize for who I am. Uh, I'm a storyteller. I'm going to tell you a lot of extra things as I'm uh, sewing with you. That's just how I am. I hope that you're enjoying the tutorials. And uh, if this has been helpful at all, if you've enjoyed the tutorial, please give me a thumbs up. Um, it's encouraging to me to see some thumbs up on the videos. Some of the videos I have some that have been watched um, hundreds of times and have one thumbs up. I'm like, what's up with that? Did out of all those people, did, did you not like my video? And then, you know, uh, people in our groups and whatnot, they always tell me that they're looking forward to my tutorials. Please give me a thumbs up so I know you really like them or don't. Um, and if you, you know, if something isn't clear, leave me a question. Um, comment me a question and I can try to make it a little bit more clear for you. Uh, I do the best that I can to slow these down and to uh, make everything as observable as possible. Sometimes my hands are in the way because I I gotta hold on to it or it doesn't sew. Like today, um, I was trying to keep my hands as much out of the way as possible and it slipped on me and uh, so my stitching wasn't perfect. It happens. It's, I don't have a, a video person and I don't have a way to hang it above me so that you can see down like some do. So I do the best that I can with the equipment that I have. So anyways, that's it for today. Please look for us um, on Facebook at Seaside Quilting Supplies, LLC. And like I said, our quilting group or sewing group, whichever, um, is called Seaside Quilting on Facebook. You're more than welcome to come on over and join us. Every um, Tuesday evening, we have a sip and shop at 7 p.m. Eastern time. On Thursdays, um, we have one. Um, it's at the... Uh, it's undetermined what time those happen. It just depends on where we can fit it into the day. And then on Sundays, we quite often have special sales, primarily for our group members. Um, so it's really nice to be part of our group. We have ends of bolt sales. We have um, different odd sales that are thrown in. It just depends on Sunday and what Barb and Mary put together for those sales. And so you want to catch us for those. We have now the app that is out on both Android and iPhone, and you can get, get those in your app store. Just search Seaside Quilting Supplies LLC, and you will find the app. Um, that's all I can think of for right now. So I have more quick tutorials coming up, cute little uh, gift items and all items to keep for yourself. I mean, you don't want to give everything away. It's nice to keep something for yourself once in a while. Um, if you're like me, you make a lot of things and you give them away. And I've been trying to think of things that I could make for gifts um, to exchange for Christmas and stuff. Um, so I'm sharing those with you. And of course, our quilting tutorials will continue. I'm going to be doing um, some blocks not in this, and some three-yard quilts and um, different on things coming up. So if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and you can click on the little bell and adjust your um, notifications. So if you'd like to see um, when all of them um, come out so you can decide which one uh, would be uh, pertain to you and be useful or you can have it set to personalized or you can set it to none, of course. But I really hope that you don't pick none because I really want you to be able to know when our tutorials come out. And you get an instant notification as soon as I publish them. So anyways, I hope that you all enjoy your weekend. And um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna post another one this weekend or not. I might, I might not. We have a thing coming up on uh, Sunday. Uh, another birthday celebration, which will be fun, you know, to get out a little bit. Got to get out once in a while. So until next time, 
I wish you happy sewing.